Welcome to our World Day of the Sick celebration. I'm Richard Corneille, CEO of the St. Joseph's Healthcare Society, sponsors and owners of St. Joseph's Healthcare London. Each year during World Day of the Sick, those who work in healthcare recall the roots of their healing mission. Historically, this event has been a very poignant occasion that we celebrate together as a healthcare community with staff, volunteers, patients, residents and their families at one of our hospital chapels. This year, COVID-19 has challenged us to discover creative solutions in providing the best health care and supports to those who rely on us. And this event is no different. Having the World Day of the Sick celebration in this online fashion does not take away from the very special and unique meaning of the day. Though we are not together in a chapel as we had hoped, we take time to pray for the sick, those in need of healing, and those who work tirelessly to help the sick and alleviate suffering. This year, Pope Francis said, a society is all the more human to the degree that it cares effectively for its most frail and suffering members in a spirit of fraternal love. And this statement rings so true as we walk through the challenges and complexities of this pandemic. This year, our Bishop will not be able to lay his hands to anoint the sick, but we know God's grace falls upon you every day, especially through the expert hands of your care providers and caregivers. Please enjoy this production, which includes readings and music from St. Joseph's Spiritual Care Department and a special service from our Bishop and the Roman Catholic Diocese of London. We also extend a warm welcome to anyone outside of the St. Joseph's Healthcare London community who may be watching from other communities. Today, we pray for all those who are sick and those whose vocation it is to care for them. God bless. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. I'm very pleased to be able to be with you again this year. Unfortunately, we can't be together in person, uh, but I'm glad that it will, at least I can be with you virtually. This year marks the 29th World Day of Prayer of the Sick, which we celebrate on the Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes. Instituted by Pope St. John Paul II in 1992, it has been an important occasion for the whole church to gather in prayer for the sick and for those who care for them. Brothers and sisters, coming together as God's family, with confidence we let us ask the Lord's forgiveness, for he is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give yourself to us to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God, our Father, you sent your Son into the world to bear our infirmities and to endure our sufferings. Give your servants who are sick strength in body, courage in spirit, and patience in suffering. Heal their illnesses so that they may have from you the help they long for. We ask this 
through Christ our Lord. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 35, verses 1 to 10. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, and the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. And they shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands. Make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are fearful of heart, Be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. And then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. And then the lame shall leap like a deer and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For the water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. And the haunts of jackals shall become a swamp, and the grass shall become reeds and rushes. A highway will be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there, nor shall any ravenous beast be upon it. They shall be not found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, and they shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. Psalm 23. The psalm refrain is, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters and he restores my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your God and your staff, they comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and love will follow me all of the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. A reading from the book of James. Are any among you suffering? they should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. And anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When he entered the Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, 
I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, with his soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to other, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it, be, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. When Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her, and she got up and began to serve him. That evening, they brought to him many who were possessed with the demons, and he cast out the spirit with a word and cured all who were sick. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. Dear brothers and sisters, in his message for the World Day of the Sick, Pope Francis urges us to follow a path of healing grounded in a trusting personal relationship between the sick and those who care for them. A society is all the more human, the Pope says, to the degree that it cares effectively for its most frail and suffering members in a spirit of fraternal love. We need to stop and listen to establish a personal relationship with others, especially our sick, to feel empathy and compassion, and to let their suffering become our own as we seek to serve them. In this gospel passage that we've just listened to, Jesus gives us a striking example of forming a personal relationship with others. He is moved to pity by the humble appeal of the centurion for his servant who is paralyzed and in distress. When Jesus says he will come and cure him, the centurion answers, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. We repeat these words at every Mass, just before we receive Jesus in Holy Communion. We say, like the centurion, Lord, I am not worthy to receive you. And we put ourselves in God's hands as he did. Jesus was amazed at the centurion's faith and heals his servant. Then Matthew tells us 
that Jesus enters Peter's house and sees his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. Jesus touched her hand and the fever left her. Matthew goes on to say that many came with their sick and Jesus cured them all. What is striking in this gospel passage is the personal relationship that Jesus develops with the people. He doesn't heal in some distant and removed way. He has compassion on anyone who is in pain and suffering. He touches the sick, showing his love for them. The coronavirus pandemic has certainly been a challenge for all of us, but especially for you at St. Joseph's Healthcare. We feel deeply for our sick who have been deprived now for months of contact with their families. We know how much our patients need the human touch of their loved ones, an embrace, a smile, someone to be with them, to comfort them. We know how hard it has been on them, how isolated they must feel as we go through yet another lockdown. The pandemic also highlights the dedication and generosity of healthcare personnel, doctors, nurses, PSWs, and volunteers, their heroism, their willingness to sacrifice and give of themselves for others. The Pope's point is that the path of healing is grounded in these personal relationships that you form with your patients. They are a precious balm, he says, that provides support and consolation to the sick in their suffering. They are what distinguishes healthcare at St. Joseph's. These personal relationships are a sign of your faith and love, a sign of the love of Jesus, a sign that Jesus is not indifferent to our pain and suffering, that he always draws near, near to us with his mercy and compassion. On this World Day of the Sick, the Church prays for the sick, and we thank our doctors, nurses, PSWs, volunteers, for their commitment and dedication in caring for their sick patients. Through the intercession of Our Lady of Lourdes, may the God of mercy and all consolation fill you with his abundant blessings. Having reflected on God's word, we now direct our prayers to God for our needs and the needs of all people. God of all, we thank you for our life, our faith, and your presence. We pray for healing in mind, body, and spirit for all people. We pray for all of God's graces, for wisdom, strength, and peace, and that each live a life of love, mercy, and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, Bishop Ronald Fabro, Auxiliary Bishop Joseph Dabrowski, for all our bishops, our priests, our deacons, and our sisters, and for those in the church ministering in the name of Christ, 
our great physician, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those across the globe struggling under the burden of COVID-19, we pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer alone, seeking a sense of peace and serenity, for family members, friends, and all caregivers, paid and volunteer, God of all, please give them strength, the skills needed, resources, wisdom, compassion, hope, and your love as they serve and journey with those living with illness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died longing for rest, might find a place at the eternal banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, our Lord, we ask you to have mercy on all who are sick. Give them your strength and love and help them to carry this cross with faith. May their sufferings be one with yours, overcome the power of evil, and lead others to our Father in heaven. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer, for you are Lord forever and ever. Amen. And now, with confidence, we unite our prayer to Jesus' prayer to his Father, using the words that he himself gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Before the final blessing, I have a special blessing for those, for all those who care for the sick. Let us pray. May the wellspring of compassion be opened in you. May soothing words find a home in you. May tenderness bless you as you reach out to comfort in body, mind, and spirit. Amid fear or frustration, may courage be given you. May patience keep vigil with you and peace of mind calm you. May your heart find a song and sing even when you are weary. May abundant love lift you and gratitude bless you as you live the mission of care entrusted to you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit go in peace. In the pain and joy 
is still unfolding. Give us all your vision, God of love. Healer of our every ill, light of each tomorrow. Give us peace beyond. Spirit of compassion, fear.